Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we are uh, we're going solo. So I am going to be playing with a new feature that I'm super excited about. Netlify just dropped today, actually, scheduled function. So this is a big one. Uh, we now have cron jobs at Netlify, and I'm completely thrilled about this. This is this is a big deal for a lot of reasons. Uh, first and foremost. Cron jobs are one of those things that you you don't know you need it until you need it. Um, and yeah, what, what Brian's saying in the chat, no more IFTTT. Um, if this, then that is an amazing tool. Zapier is an amazing tool, but it is really nice to not have to use those tools, especially if you're already building out APIs locally and and all those kinds of things. Um, so this is, this is a big one. Um, and I'm also just really excited about it because like, I regularly find myself wanting just a way to post a message every once in a while to to remind me of a thing or to uh, you know go check some details. Maybe I want to rebuild my site at a on a daily basis because I've got some details that change, right? And being able to do that uh, without having to reach for third party tooling is is a really really good thing. Um, oh, what's up, Ben? Welcome, team. Uh, yes, Chris, I'm going no glasses. I uh, I started playing with my light and I get weird reflections on my glasses. So I I think I might just be somebody who doesn't wear glasses now. I don't know. My my vision is is not actually that bad. I just wear the glasses because I, you know, when I was a kid, I had the like whatever 2015 where you could see like further than they would expect you to. And as I've gotten older, like I only have 2020. So, you know, I've. <laughs> Um, but yeah, contacts for, for, uh, if I, if I think if my, um, if I had worse vision, I would probably be looking for contacts, but honestly, I wear the glasses because I feel like they've become part of who I am, but maybe no more. Maybe, maybe now I'm a no glasses person. Who knows? Um, all right. We got everybody. Hey, Cassidy, how you doing? Welcome everybody. Welcome for Hank. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I am really, really excited to play around with this today. Um, so here's, here's what I'll ask chat. What are y'all currently using? Like, well, first two questions. First, who's using cron jobs today? Let me, let me get a, a W in the chat, a boop in the chat. Uh, if you are, if you're using cron jobs today, uh, I'm seeing a couple people. Yep. Yep. Lots of people in here. Um, Ooh, Integra Matt, That's a good one. Um, yeah, lots and lots of people using them. C Cassidy is on a mission right now. Who's gonna help her? Oh, there's Ben. Ben is here to assist. Are we gonna get the buried in boops? Are we doing it? <laughs> I like David is is planning to use cron jobs later. <laughs> if you're not familiar with cron jobs, that joke will be funny shortly. Um, oh, I think you're gonna. Are you gonna do it? Got to work harder than that, chat. Get there. Get there. Get there. <laughs> Oh, you're almost there. You're so close. You're so close to having this done. Oh, Brian's in. Okay. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I shortened the timeout a little bit. This is now much harder for y'all. Just in, in what happens is every time you fill the screen with boops, I shorten the timeout just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, I, you know what, this is, this is great. Okay. So, so let's, let's talk a little bit about this. So, so we see a lot of people are using the, uh, <laughs> a lot of people are using cron jobs. I think that's really exciting. I am, I am really, really into cron jobs as a, just a convenient way to do work at a regular basis. Oh, here comes the stampede. And for some reason, my stampede is so quiet. Yeah, that was too quiet. Okay. So that that you heard the end of that stampede because apparently I had my sound effects turned down to like negative something, um, but so so cron jobs are are the sort of thing that, like, I just use them for uh, you know I listed a, a handful of things. I'd love to hear from you though. What are you using cron jobs for? Like, what are y'all when you're putting these together? What sort of things do you need to do on a regular basis? Um, so. Let's see, Brian's talking about a, a YouTube API thingy um, that that could have used a daily ingest. That's a great like that is a great use case. If you've got third party content and you want to pull it in together, uh, a cron job is a great way to do that. You can go hit that API 
and bring that content back in. Uh, Tony's using it to back up data to a GitHub repo. Ibaldi's using it to uh, to process invoices. Ooh, that's a that's a really good one. Um, looks like Magento's using cron jobs a lot. I that makes sense in e-commerce. You would want to do inventory checks and and fulfillment checks and that kind of thing. Um, cron jobs are a great way to skirt API limits. That's actually a good point. Like if you were trying to use something on a free tier and you don't want to like burn through your API limits, you can make fewer API calls at a regular basis and kind of batch things. Um, a good uh, good use case, I'm seeing Brian talking about sending daily activity updates via email. I personally don't want an email every time an activity happens. I want like a digest of activity. So a cron job is a great way to do that. You could I could say I want a daily digest and that cron job would then collect activity and send me one email at a regular interval that has everything that happened since the previous email was sent. That to me is way less noisy than whenever somebody does something in the app, send me an email. And those are really, really useful ways of doing it. Um, see, static site generators plus API calls daily or hourly to rebuild the site. That is a, a great way. Like uh, a good example would be actually the Learn with Jason site. The episodes as they go from scheduled to live to um, an episode archive, those right now we we end up editing things in Sanity and that triggers builds and, and kind of keeps the site up to date. So we don't really need to worry about it because all that sort of stuff happens. But what happens if I, um, you know, I forget and an episode gets canceled, but I forget to take it off the schedule. Well, if the site rebuilt on a daily basis, that scheduled episode would disappear and it wouldn't confuse people. Um, yeah, Charlie Devs is saying that it's a, a way to do an underrate. It's, they're an underrated tool. 100% agreed. Um, download an audio clip from a stream at a certain time of the day and upload it? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so many, so many good things. But uh, yeah, fetch data to populate business KPIs on a dashboard. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, okay. Maybe that's what we should build today is a way to pull in something and like put it somewhere else. I've been playing with a Notion API. That's pretty exciting. Maybe we can do a little bit of that. Okay, I like this. I want to do this. Let's do it. So, um, all right. So first, let's do a quick switch over to the um, to the pairing, or I guess it's not really pairing anymore. Oh, Charlie, thank you for gifting a sub. Thank you uh, very much for that. Um, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking? Oh yeah, let's talk about the let's talk about the live streaming. So we're live right now on Twitch. Thank you all for being here. I'm really enjoying that. Uh, I have Jordan with me from White Coat Captioning, and Jordan is writing down everything that we say today so that you all can keep up. Uh, making the show a little bit more accessible. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, NX, the monorepo tool, and Backlight, the design system management tool, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which I really appreciate. It also helps me keep the lights on with, you know, I have a, a team that helps me with video production, a team that helps me with keeping the, the site up to date. And all of that is made possible through the support of sponsors and you chat, everybody who's subscribed. So Charlie, you uh, you gifting a sub, Brian. Oh, Brian just gifted a bunch of subs. Thank you so much. All of that helps me keep this show running. So thank you all so, so much. Um, we are very close to a hype train, it looks like. So if anybody wants to make noise, uh, if you've been on the fence about whether or not you want to be a subscriber to this channel, which would give you access to all those boops and, and making noise and, you know, all those good things, hey, now's the time. Uh, so... Let's talk a little bit about what happened today. So Netlify just announced this feature. We have uh, scheduled functions. They're in beta right now. And that is because we acquired a company called Quirrell. So Quirrell is a, a company that was created by Simon Knott. Um, Simon, if you follow like Blitz.js or if you're in the next JS world, is a really active contributor there. Um, Oh, dang. Thank you so much for the, the, the sub. Oh boy. Everybody's gifting subs. Thank you all so much. Proving idol. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Brandon gifting subs. Ah, oh, man, y'all are the best. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> just keeping them going. Um, and so Quirrell is, was a way for you to set up cron jobs kind of externally. It was a third party tool. And so it would kind of give you the ability to use any serverless platform. And we liked this so much at Netlify that we just got in touch and we were like, hey, why don't we just, uh, you know, make this official? So Simon joined us and he's now part of our team. And as part of that, we have 
worked it in. It's now part of the core Netlify serverless offering, and we have the ability to do scheduled functions. So what I want to do today is I want to actually try this out. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to go in and let's make a new repo here. And I'm going to, let's see, call it uh, Netlify scheduled functions. And I'm going to go into that and let's uh, NPM init. I'm just going to say yes. Good. And then uh, I want to, what else do I want to do? I want to get in it. Good. All right. Those are all the things that I need, I think. And from here, oh, you know what I should do instead? No, I'm not. I'm just going to use regular old functions. We're not going to like build a site for this. It's just going to be for some functions. And uh, I have the docs here. The docs are available at the this short link here that'll take you to the github um, let me also link to this blog post if anybody wants to check it out um, and then this is quarrel which is the the technology that we built on top of for these scheduled functions um, let's see hype train level four dang y'all we are really close thank you uh adrian and adarta for for subscribing thank you again to everybody who is Submitting. I don't know if we've ever been past level four. This might be the highest score we've gotten in a hype train uh, ever, actually. So, <laughs> so thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. This is fun for me. Um, oh, oh, we're going more. Ben is Ben just gifted one and we're on to level five. Is there any level higher than five? I feel like Cassidy has been through the full hype train cycle before. What is the what's the highest you can get is five the Five is the highest. Okay, I'm getting confirmation. So this is, this is, oh, Chris out here with all the, jeez, just killing it. Thank you very much for gifting all those subs. And is that, are we, are we doing it? Poofy Chew, is that Jessica? What is up? How have you been? I used to work with Jessica back at IBM. Um, yeah, all sorts of, all sorts of great, great things going on. And we just hit the full hype train y'all all right is that that's the whole thing right we just we we hype accomplished we've gone full hype it is it is that it level five complete did they add a level six eh? Eh? where are we at 100 percent. all right y'all thank you all so much uh we have uh let's see for less than four minutes to see how far beyond 100% we can push this. If anybody is still on the fence, you can use your Amazon Prime account to sub, and that uh, that also goes to help the show. So thank you all very, very much for all of the help, and thank you so much for uh, for just all the support. This is this is all very, very helpful to me, and uh, you know it also just kind of makes my day when everybody likes. Oh, you like me? You really like me? Um, <laughs> All right, so let's let's actually use this thing. So I'm getting into the docs here. This is the scheduled functions documentation. This is the new feature built by Netlify just dropped today. It's now in beta. So it's in Netlify Labs. So if y'all aren't familiar with Netlify Labs, I would highly encourage you to check this out because what Netlify Labs will let you do is test drive new stuff. So um, let me share this link here. This is very cool. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Jessica, for the sub. I appreciate it. And let's dive into the app. And the way you can find uh, labs is you can go into Netlify Labs here, and it's going to show you options, things that you can enable uh, experimentally, right? And so scheduled functions is the one that we want. So I'm going to click enable to get that turned on. And then I'm going to come back here and let's see. So I can get started. I went to Netlify Labs and I enabled the, the feature. So then I'm going to have the option to enable scheduled functions on individual sites within your Netlify organization by navigating to the functions tab and clicking enabled scheduled functions. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to create a site. So let's, let's start by opening this up and I'm just going to make a basic function. And the function that I want to make is going to live at Netlify functions and we'll call this one, uh, Hello world. And I'm going to use TypeScript because I want to get the, uh, there's type safety that we can get, but also it lets me use modern syntax. So I can export const handler. And that is going to let me send back one of these and our status code is going to be 200 and the body will be okay. So this is like our, our basic hello world function. And with that, I'm going to 
get get status. I'm gonna git add all, great, git commit, and we'll say um, add a hello world function. All right, and then I'm going to, uh, let's push. Did I create this repo? I didn't, did I? So GitHub repo create, and I'm gonna use this repo name here. So this is the GitHub CLI, which I love. Let's drop that in here. Ooh, good, uh, good submarine placement, Charlie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brandon, you got me hooked on. Uh, I, I, I should. That's actually a lie. I, I really like um, TypeScript, but I'm not very good at using it. So I'm, I'm gonna like sort of use TypeScript here, and it's probably gonna hurt anybody who's very serious about it. Uh, but what this lets me do is I've now created this repo and I can git push upstream and I'll just set the upstream so that we don't have to keep typing this whole thing out. And I'm going, did that create my, or wait, git remote, it didn't. So let me create an origin, git remote add origin. And then I want that to be git at github.com. It's gonna be this and we'll do a dot git, all right. So then I can git push upstream origin main. There it goes. And if I click this, it's gonna open up. There's our function all running. Oh yeah, that TypeScript episode with, with Orta was really good. Let's let's pull up. We've got a couple really good TypeScript episodes, so let's do some searching. Um, I'm gonna just search for TypeScript in here. And so we have this one. We have this one, and we have this one. So this is probably a good starting point. This is Orta, who was until recently on the core TypeScript team. Oh, Xander, thank you so much for all the subs. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I Y'all are the best. Really appreciate it. And Oh, and you subbed yourself. The best. Um, so this is Orta teaching us about TypeScript fundamentals. This is Brandon teaching us, or Ben, sorry, teaching us about uh, the React in TypeScript, which is a, a really good episode. And this is Tomaj teaching us about serverless functions in TypeScript. So three really, really good episodes if you want to dive in and uh, and get a better sense of TypeScript. I'm not going to do too much with it today. I'm, I'm mostly just using it for the, um, the convenience of not having to write common JS. I want to write EJS. Uh, or ESM, I should say. So then what we're looking at. So scheduled functions use the cron expression format. Okay, that's fine. But I would actually prefer that it, that we run it like this. We've got annually and, and daily and stuff like that. Those are, that's really nice. So, okay, first thing I need to do is I need to install Netlify functions. So npm install Netlify functions, great. Should I deploy the site first? Let's let's deploy it so that way I can just deploy everything that happens and y'all can see it working. So I'm going to um, Netlify init, and that is going to let me create and configure a new site. I'm using the Netlify CLI for this. Choose my team, and I'm going to say Netlify scheduled functions. Just use the same name. Good. And my build command, I don't need one because there's actually not a, a site to build. Um, we'll deploy the current, that's fine. Netlify functions is the folder that we want to get. And why did it not? You know, I broke my GitHub off, like my tokens are weird, and I need to go figure out what I did. What we can do in the meantime, though, is I can go back to my sites and go here. Here's this, and then I'm going to go to my site settings, and we're going to connect a git. So I'm just going to reconnect here. This is the long way. Um, if you, like me, have broken your token. Broken your token. Do a search. I'm in the wrong org, so that's not going to show me anything. Let's get this one instead. Try again. There it is. We're going to do the main branch. We don't have, we don't need any of that stuff. So we can just get right into it. Deploy. There it goes. This is only a function. So it should happen pretty dang quick here. Uh, 
Oh, nice. FS Jam with, with Orta. Always good. Ben Myers wrote an Algolia bot for chat. What does that mean? Oh, I could play the game. Yeah, I forgot we have a game now. So you can you have uh, the ability to do pattern matching while you wait. Oh, here we go. This site is definitely deployed, so I'm not going to finish this game. But uh, we can... That's a fun thing to play if you want to do it. Then I have only a function deployed, so I'm going to go to Netlify Functions, Hello World, and... What did I do wrong? I didn't make it async! Oh, silly, silly, silly. Okay, so let me git commit Netlify functions, hello world, and we'll give it a message of fix, make it async. And then when I push this, that'll kick off a new build. And this should go nice and quick because everything will be cached. Yeah, there we go. It's gone. Functions are already done. And website. All right, so going back out here, that took, what, 18 seconds? Perfect. I'm happy about that. Then I can go over here, run it again. And there is our OK. So that's the response we wanted. Um, good. So for. Local dev, though, we're going to work in Netlify dev, and that'll give us a, a locally running instance here so that I can go to, again, Netlify functions, and we'll go to hello world. Ta-da! There's our, there's our function. Let me blow that up a bit so we can see what's going on. And then if I take this over to the left and this over to the right, and I change this out to save it. Reload it. Okay, so we're we're now doing local dev for our uh, local dev for our serverless functions uh, using Netlify Dev, which is I think uh, got to be my favorite feature of the Netlify CLI is that we can just try all this stuff and use it together, set up our redirects, our functions, and all those good things. Um, this, yeah, the uh, the Algolia thing that you're talking about sounds really dang cool. Stream Vite and it drops a link to the Vite stream into chat. Yep, I want that. That is very cool. Um, <laughs> Netlify should have acquired Wordle. I do love Wordle. Wordle is a good one. Um, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so the game icons, Tony, did change because originally in December it was uh, kind of like holiday themed. And so we switched over to a more generic uh, non holiday. Uh, yeah, Ben, please do ping me. That is very, very cool. So. We've done the we've done what we needed to do to get this running. So now let's actually make it a cron job. This is no, that's not the one I wanted. I want this one. This one. Here it is. All right. So I've installed Netlify functions. Good. Now to make this a cron job, I can const schedule and we'll, oh wait, I don't even need to do that anymore. I can do it like this. Ha ah, schedule from Netlify functions. And then what we do down here is uh, we get our, can our const of handler function, and then I'm going to export const. I could probably do this differently, but we'll say handler, and that's going to be schedule. And hourly would be good, I think, yeah. Um, and then we just run our handler function. OK, so that is in fact it that's the whole thing this function will now run every hour on the hour which is not uh fast enough for this stream so i'm going to make it kind of absurdly fast so let's look at cron syntax because i don't remember how to i never get this right so let's look at the breakdown we get minute hour day month week and so if I want this to run every minute, I would go minute, hour, day, month, week. So that basically means run this once a minute, which is 
a lot. You pro probably don't have many cases where you would actually want this to run every minute outside of a demo, but let's give it a shot and see how does the, what does the instruction say? So once we set this up, good. We have a test scheduled function. Um, oh, we can also do it in Netlify.toml. So we could say, oh, this is cool. Okay. So the other way that we could have done this, if we didn't want to add this schedule wrapper is we could make a Netlify.toml. And then in here I could do uh, functions dot hello world and say schedule and we would run it hourly or, you know, daily or whatever. Um, good. Okay. So this is good. I'm happy about that and using function language, developing debugging. Okay. Developing and debugging. This is what I was interested. In. So today scheduled functions only run on published deploys. So deploy previews won't execute scheduled functions. That makes sense because as you're developing, you don't want to like fire off a million of these on different deploy branches and stuff. Similar to event triggered functions, scheduled functions that are published as a part of the deploy cannot be invoked directly with a URL. Oh, interesting. I wonder if that's going to change here. So here, it doesn't do anything anymore, right? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't give me my, my outcome. It just kind of gives me a, a no op. Oh wait, no, that's the old one. Where's this, this one? Okay. So that is running. So I wonder if it just kind of lets you execute it to see that it works, but it doesn't do it on the cron job. Netlify dev. Netlify functions invoke my function. Okay, let's try that. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to run Netlify functions invoke hello world. Ran into an error. Oh, yeah. Okay, that would make sense. So you have to have two tabs open for this. So let me run Netlify dev. And then I'm going to run Netlify functions invoke hello world. I've actually never used this feature before. Functions directories. Oh, I'm in the wrong. Okay, here we go. Learn with JSON, Netlify scheduled functions. And let's try that one more time. Port flag. Yeah, there it is. And it gives us our outcome. That's dope. So that's really helpful because it, uh, it, I didn't even realize that that was a thing we could do. I always have to like spin it up out here and then I'm using like Postman and stuff. Um, okay. That's very cool. I like that. I'm happy. So text yourself a positive encourage every minute. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, one, I, I Baldi, if I did it as like one star, wouldn't that just mean the first minute of every hour? Ooh, crontab.guru is a great resource. Let me pull that up so that uh, I can make sure that I'm not lying to everyone. So crontab.guru lets us run at 405. So if I did it at one star at minute one, and then this would be every minute. Okay. But if we wanted to run it like every minute, for hour one. So that would be like between 1 a.m. and 1.59 a.m. run every minute. That's every minute of every day. This would be like at minute zero hourly. Um, and then, yeah, so there's there's a lot of ways to do that. But yes, it is, it is indeed complicated, which is why I vastly prefer the uh, hourly syntax, right? So that's, that's the, the reason that these are so beneficial. Um, okay. So see, are there any others down here that hourly reboot is kind of cool because reboot would mean whenever the, the server restarts, that's not really applicable to us. I don't think because it's a serverless function. Um, but daily, weekly, monthly, annual and yearly mean the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yup. 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 Um, oh yeah. Oh, you know what else we could do? That's a good point. Um, Ibaldi is saying we could say like every 15 minutes, right? So every 15 minutes we could run it or every, 
uh, every 10 minutes or every 30 minutes. So this is really helpful. Um, but yes, lots of lots of good ways to to solve these sorts of things. And um, for our particular purposes, we're just going to run it every single minute. It's going to be pure chaos, and it is going to be wonderful. So we've got our cron job here. That is going to uh, let's see. So we're we're developing and invoking. I think we can just push this. So let's um, echo node modules to my dot git ignore. And I think this might have done something. No, that's good. Yep. All right. So do a check. Got the git ignore, the netlify.tom, all the package lock. I'm going to git add everything. Good. Let's git commit and say uh, feature first cron job. And I'm going to push. So let's go back out. And we'll be building. Here it goes. Oh, you know what I got to do, though? I got to enable cron jobs for this site. So let me go to functions and I got to click this button. We're enabling. I wonder if I'm going to have to rebuild the site to get that to work. Let's see. I'm going to guess that I do have to rebuild the site because I didn't have that checked. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to trigger a deploy. We're just going to manually trigger this one and say deploy the site. I'm curious if it's going to show us anything about whether or not we added a cron job. I Hopefully it will. Let's see, functions. Scheduling functions. Yeah, look at that go. Okay, so very exciting. And then that what that should mean is if I go to this functions tab and this says scheduled, then we can see that it was last executed. I think it just showed, did it show back here? Next execution today at 11.03 a.m. Okay, let's watch. So we just got to kill a minute. Hey, it ran. So it ran at 11.02, and then it should run again at 11.03. And these are all, I these are all run as, uh, yeah, it's all real time. There it is. Okay, so there's our function invocation. Okay, we did it, y'all. We did uh, we did a scheduled function, right? It's that's the whole thing. It did what we wanted. It's it was nice and fast, and you know, yeah, this is obviously 2.3 milliseconds is is nice and quick. Um, I think unless you're writing rust <laughs> now, granted we didn't do very much here, but, uh, okay. So the next thing I want to try is I want to dig in here and see what we get. If we, uh, if we try to do something with this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off screen and create a notion Thing that we can work with. So let's get, uh, I'm going to create a new page. All right. So here is a notion page. Oh, come on, come back there. Here's a new notion page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it into a table. All right. And so we'll call this, we'll call this cron job testing. So what I want to do is I want to go into the Notion API and let's insert a new entry into this AP, into this table uh, every minute based on something. So I want to, uh, let's database object, query a database. Let's, let's query the database. Um, list databases. Can I use that or is it just retrieve? Database ID is required. And my database ID is this one. And oh, and the way that you have to do this too, is you have to like invite your, um, a thing here. So actually let me really quickly create a, a API key so that I have one. Um, that's unique to this. So 
go to integrations and all right so let me show you kind of what i'm doing here so that it's not fully mystery i'm also trying not to like accidentally dox myself here um so i i went to my settings up here the settings and members and then i'm going to integrations and then you can develop your own integrations and when i click this button what happens is it going to show a bunch of things no so i'm going to create a new integration and we're going to call this lwj scheduled functions testing um we're not going to set any of that but we are going to set it to my own space i want it to be able to read update and insert content don't think I need any user information, so let's leave that off. And then I'm going to get this integration token. Um, and the only way that this is going to work is if I share a table with this particular integration. Um, so what I'm going to do is pull this off screen, get my token, copy it, and put it somewhere that I can get to it later. Uh, let's... I pull this out and put it over here. No, okay, let's do one of these. All right. You hackers, you I you know dirty you hackers. hackers. Okay, so uh so then I have that set up there and all right, so that's a oh, you know what I can do? Watch, watch. I'm going to Netlify end set and I'm gonna say notion uh integration token. And I'm going to set it to this integration key value, which I'm going to pull off screen for that. And then clear and just make sure that I have the late, the right version of the CLI here. I do. Okay. So I just ran Netlify env list and that gave me the, now I have you this. Hackers, you hackers, you dirty hackers. <laughs> Um, yes. So that's all set. That's, that's good to go. And we now have this available in our environment, which means that we can build something with it. So let's start by, uh, actually trying to like write a query. Um, and so what I'm going to do with this is let's go to my notion here. I'm going to Oh, wait, hold on. Hide this sidebar so I can come back. There we go. All right, so now I have this this set up here, and what I think I need to do is get this ID, and then let's go back here and just try it. Like, will that work? Does it execute if I try it like that? Why does it show me this if it doesn't? Oh, it's like filling this out for me instead of databases. Is this the right one? Okay. Don't entirely understand what's going on here, but let's, let's try it and just see if I can get something to work. So I'm going to install uh, npm install notion hq client and then I'm going to get this piece here let's bring this to the side oops and we'll get over here and let's just make a function that's like notion table ts I'm going to import um, handler from Netlify functions. And now we're actually going to write a little real TypeScript here. So I'm going to uh, do export, oops, const handler, and that's going to be the handler type. And then that gets whatever it gets. But check this out. You can actually see the, the available types. If I like go to event, um, oh, it needs to be async. Jeez, I'm like really determined to make that mistake today. So I've got my event and then uh, in here, if I go to like event dot, I can see all the, the values. And this is the benefit of TypeScript, right? Is if we, by setting this handler type, it tells us what's available in here. I don't know that we're gonna use this right now. So I'm gonna leave it out for the moment. And instead I'm going to, um, where did my, 
Notion example go. Here it is. I'm going to import client from Notion HQ client. And then we're going to get a Notion instance to be a new client. Uh, the auth is going to be process dot env dot what did I call this notion integration token right so now that I have my notion integration token I am going to set my database ID DB ID and that's gonna equal where did this value come from Like, does anybody know database ID? What if I just want like the straight up ID? Who knows? Who knows? Um, copy link to view properties, templates, sort, wrap cells, learn about databases. Uh, notion get database ID. It looks like people have Googled this before. If your URL looks like below, that is the database. Database ID and the V is the long ID. Must share your database with the integration. Okay, so let's do that part. I'm going to share this with scheduled functions testing. So that means that this now has access to it and I need so this is my database ID, I guess. So let's try that and see if I can just list all of these pieces. Um, so to do that, I need to go back to the notion docs and we're going to say const response equals await notion databases retrieve database ID is going to be DB ID. And let's just return status code of 200 and a body will be JSON stringify uh, response. And we'll make that look a little bit nicer. And maybe to, I think we'll get content type application JSON. If we set this, it'll maybe look a little bit nicer in certain browsers. So I'm going to save this, go back here. I think this is already running, which means that if I go over here and I try notion table, API token is invalid. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I, did I restart since I had the make sure it pulls it in. There's my token and here's my database. Okay. So I just hadn't restarted to get that new environment variable. Okay. So we have the ability now to, to get this in and we can see here that all of these are empty because we're not, uh, we're not actually using them. So let's delete this one, delete this one, and then we'll just put one in. Uh, and I'm going to make these really, really simple by actually just kind of deleting everything except for the name for now and we'll we'll add more later on but let's run this one more time and we get properties did it pull that data name title title type so this is just getting the database okay so then i need to go in and get the the actual database stuff. So let's query a database, right? And let's get the pieces. So databases, database ID query, good. And, oh, you can do filters. That's really cool. Errors. And let's just look at the JavaScript. So I'm going to do notion databases query put the database query in and then I can leave the filter out, leave the sorts out and that should just give us a response. So let's uh, let's do databases query. It doesn't seem unhappy. So I'm going to come out here and try this object list results. Here are our entries. 
Nice. Okay. This is great. So this gives us everything that we needed. Um, I'm really, really happy about this. So uh, we now have the ability to retrieve from a Notion database. Next, I want to insert from a Notion database, and then we'll start getting into the cron job stuff. So let me look here, and let's go back up to the top and say update database. I want to update it and to update it, I want to update with options. I don't really want that. I want to put something in to the database, right? Cause I don't really care about the patch options. Hmm. Let's go keep digging here. We've got uh, pagination, database object, property object, create a database, update database, update property schema, pages. Hmm. Hmm might need us to go full screen here. So let's go into query sort database object, retrieve a database, controls how it is updated. Okay, we don't, but that's not what we want. Updates existing database. But what if I want to insert into the database? Users, common, Is it a page object? That seems wrong, right? Create a database. Don't want to create a database. All right, let's maybe just um, Notion API insert database entry. Create a database, getting started. Insert data in database via Notion API. Off to Stack Overflow we go. So we're going to notion.pages.create, and then we set it as a parent database. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So we can do this. Let's go in here, and I'm going to say notion.pages.create, and then we need parent. And that's going to be database ID. Okay. And then we also need properties. And the first one that we get, I think, is just name. Is that what I set? Just name. So we'll do name. And then we need to title. Feels like a lot. Text, content, like that. We'll skip the description. And I think that should do it. So let's try that. Okay. It says it worked. Moment of truth. Hey! did it y'all oh boy this is uh this is great so now we have the ability to do something on a cron job which is what we wanted to do in the first place so what should we do with our cron job here um what about like what if we pull something from the dad joke api or something are these are these like actual clean dad jokes? I've never looked at this API. I don't want to do something that's like secretly uncle jokes. Okay, this is pretty good actually. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Let's uh let's get a random joke as text and we'll just inject it into the joke. Football scores and commentary live would be good, but I don't 
know of any open APIs that do that. I'm going to I'm going to roll with this one for now and uh and depending on how quickly we get through this because we've actually got a decent amount of time left, maybe we can try for something a little more ambitious as well here. So let's uh let's get into the dad joke and so what I think we can do is we can say uh, const joke equals awaits. I'm going to have to import fetch, aren't I? Yes. So let's go with npm install uh, node fetch. Did y'all see that fetch is landing in node? Um, there's a new, where is it? Here. This is very exciting. You're going to be able to use fetch in node. Is there a link to this though? Oh, this one doesn't have a link. Where's the... Does this one have a link? I really just want a link to, yes, the GitHub issue. There we go. Merged. We have fetch in node now, which is very, very exciting. Um, which means that we'll be able to just use fetch the way that we use fetch and we won't have to like do this this whole dance of of uh, importing a polyfill to use it. So let's go here and then we'll go here and then I'm going to import fetch from whoops from node fetch. might have to do a little bit of a dance here to make this work. I can't quite remember how the exports work, but let's try it. And we're going to say we want to fetch from, not that, we want to fetch from dad jokes. Okay. And I want to send headers of, oops, accept, and we'll use text plain so that we just get plain text. That's all we really need. And what we want to do then is we will get the response and we'll say res text. And then what should theoretically happen? You know what? I was going to, I was going to check this and I've changed my mind. We're just going all in. We're just going to throw it straight in and see what happens. So I'm going to save and just like that. Yeet. Hey, first try. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Let's do it again. Get a different one. Did that one work or did that one fail? That it worked and that it worked. Oh, dang it. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So next thing we can do is let's use the, the Netlify Toml this time. Let's go, uh, we'll go in here and I'm going to say, uh, that one's already running on a, a schedule because we wrote it with code. So instead let's do it like this. We will run notion table and we will schedule and this one was minutes hours days months years right so that is going to run every minute we will run our notion table function so assuming that works i'm going to git add everything git commit and say add a new dad joke every minute to notion okay Let's push that up and make this a little bit bigger while we wait for our deploys. Every minute is going to be aggressive, but I, I want to uh, have a, a short timeout. We'll actually extend that at the end to make it less um, intense because we're, we're currently running two functions every minute, which is not what we actually want to do in any production environment. But for the sake of not uh, making y'all stare at a screen while we wait, for that to finish, we're we're gonna go faster. Um, so we can see here that it is scheduled, and now let's head over to our functions, and we can see it's set up. It's scheduled to run every minute, and if we look at this table, what we should see, there we go. There's there's one. And so every minute we should get another one. Oh, these are bad. These are really bad. You want to hear my favorite dad joke right now, chat? Why do chicken coops only have two doors? 
because if they had four doors, they would be chicken sedans. So, did we, uh, what was the ID keyed off of? The, so the ID is, the ID that we're using is this database ID here. And I have that stored in just a, a variable up here at the top. Um, so that's, that's what we're using right now. And the dad jokes don't need any APIs. It just gives you a random one. And we can see here, another one came in. And, uh, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> all right, I'll give you back the subs. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> too dad, too furious. Love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, one joke per minute. Yep. 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 Okay. This is, so this is great, right? Like we, we have been able to, with relatively low effort here, gotten this set up and, Oh no, Tony's doing one. Why aren't there two Yogi Bears? Because they made a boo-boo. That one's bad. That's real bad. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Um, oh, here's another one coming in. So, so there we go. We've now made these every minute, right? So let's change this. And what I want to do instead is I want to run this daily. So I'm going to swap this out and I want a new joke every day. That seems like a reasonable amount for me to get. Um, and then I'm also going to change this hello world to run uh, once a day. But let's run it at noon every day. How about that? So this will run at the, the 12th hour every day. And okay. Get add everything, and then we'll get commit and say, uh, you know, feature make the cron jobs less aggressive. Okay, oops, get push. And up it goes, and that'll um, <laughs> resisting arrest. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad joke. Jeez. Um, if a function is still scheduled, can you still call it manually? That is a great question. Let's try. I'm going to go to GitHub. Or no, we're going to... What's the name of the site? I had it up here. Here. And I'm going to call Notion Table. No. So that's actually a good thing to call out. When you do a cron job, you are basically saying this is a system function, not a public function. And they do call that out in the docs if I can find them. Um, scheduled functions run on published deploys, but scheduled functions that are published as part of a deploy, why can't I click? Scheduled functions that are published as part of a deploy cannot be invoked directly with a URL. I actually think this makes sense, and, and here's why. Imagine you have a reporting or something that batch processes discounts or, or whatever it is, right? And you want that to run at a random interval or a, a set interval. If that is done manually, it could break a system, right? And so what, what this does is it still gives you the ability to run this Netlify functions invoke, which will let you fire it, um, but it won't let somebody like spam the URL uh, and and make the system do things that it's it's not supposed to do. So yeah, that is a uh, that is a good thing. It's a good thing to do. Um, yeah, really really excited about that. Oh, and a DDoS is avoided too. Yeah, like because a lot of what I'm going to be doing with my cron jobs, for example, is I'm imagining um, we track various metrics at. Netlify for my team. And I'm thinking I can go hit a few different APIs and put together a little like report for myself. I can uh, insert it into Notion, for example, um, or I could send it as an email using SendGrid or, or whatever. And that way I could get a daily digest email or a weekly digest of key things that we're trying to look at. So I don't forget to go check those pages and little things like that are, are just so helpful. And a lot of times I don't 
do them because I don't, you know, I don't want to like go spin up a service. And then I got to remember that I use Zapier for this one, but I use if this, then that for that one. And if they're all just kind of functions and I've got a little suite of, of my own utility things that I've, that I'm using, that makes me, I'm happy about that. That, that feels good and, and useful. Um, since Simon not joined Netlify has the will, will the real blitz stand up kind of, I, uh, somebody thought that Blitz.js was my thing. I was like, it's definitely not. I, uh, I've used Blitz.js for like, I think one episode we did a, and, and like Blitz is cool. So let me pull that up. Here's, nope, here's the search. Um, here's Blitz. If you are not familiar, Blitz is cool. However, I have nothing to do with it. It's just a coincidence. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Probably need to do a follow up because I think Blitz has changed a lot. They, I think they did a hard fork or not a hard fork, but they they forked Next.js and they're working on a, uh, I think less dependent on Next.js uh, model so that it's more kind of drop in on any framework to to be more batteries included. May not be a thing anymore. Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, lots of lots of cool stuff going on in the space and it's all happening so fast that I can't keep up with it. But this is exciting. Like this is really exciting. So um, for y'all to go check this out, just to recap what we did to get this working is I um, I went through this, this Netlify scheduled functions launch doc and then I went to Netlify labs and enabled scheduled functions. Um, so good things there. And then I went to my site. Went to the functions tab, hit the enable scheduled functions button. And then in my function, uh, we went about this two ways. So we had a hello world where we pulled in this schedule helper from the Netlify functions package and just wrapped it with a, a cron tab. Um, and then there's also the way where we write a function as usual. So this is a standard serverless function. I'm using the, the TypeScript flavor, um, and that lets us just do what we want to do. So we're pulling a random joke from I can has dad joke. We then insert that into the Notion API or into a Notion table using the Notion API. And that's all something that we could do kind of on, on random demand. But then we set it up using this Netlify.toml syntax to add a daily uh, new joke to the table. So this is a, a pretty like crash coursey way of doing it, but you can kind of imagine anything you can do with a serverless function, you can now do at an interval. And this is really exciting because there are a lot of things that I just have to remember to go, you know, oh, I got to push a button to start this report, or I got to remember to go here and, you know, download this thing. And then I got to put it in this channel so everybody can see it. I could use the Slack API to post a message once a day to my team that says, don't forget to, you know, monitor this thing or, you know, all, all sorts of really interesting things that I could do, uh, even multivariate things. Like I can pull a report and I can email it and post it to Slack and post it to Notion all as part of the same daily job using a serverless function like this. So um, there are some really, really interesting possibilities here. And Tony, yes, once you set a, a function as scheduled here, it is no longer available as a public function. So if we go back to our published site, which is here, right? Here's our published site. And I try to open this notion table, it's going to show up as uh, access denied. And that is because we don't want people hitting our robot functions uh, willy nilly. So we would need to explicitly double, pu like double publish that function so that there was a bot version and then a public access version if you want to do that. Um, no, Tony, this is, this is all very new. So I'm kind of repeating it to, to remind myself as well. Um, okay. Chat. We've got, call it 20 minutes. What do you want to try? What questions do you have? What are you, what are you interested in seeing from these, these scheduled functions? I'm going to dance while you think. How to display jokes on the site. Uh, 
Well, Chris, if you dance now, you're dancing with me. Okay. Um, so displaying, you, okay, if we want to build a static site, yeah, let's do it. Let me, let me go here. And then what I'm going to do is let's go up here. We'll go with an index.html. This will work. This will be fine. Um, so I'm going to close Netlify functions here. I'm going to use an Emmet abbreviation. And then what I'm going to do is uh, let's... Are, I don't really want to pull from the Notion API because I'll need to like stand up a, a full page or something like that. So I'm probably going to skip that part. But uh, But maybe we could do... I guess I could do a Vite project, right? Like, why don't we just do that? It's really, really fast to use Vite. So um, let's npm init Vite at latest. We'll put it in site. Uh, I'm going to use, I'll use React because I know that. Um, and then I'm going to go into the site. We'll run an npm install. And inside of here, we will be able to uh, to call our function. So what we can do is actually duplicate this one and let's say like get notion data and we can revert back to what we did before, which is to get a notion databases dot query, right? And then in here, we're just gonna simp get out of my way, Jeebus. All right, go over here. Get down here. Eh, okay. So now we've got what should fetch all of the data from our API. Um, let me run a, let's go back. And so what I'm going to do is run a Netlify. Let's set the base for build. Uh, so we'll set the base to site. Is that gonna break everything? That probably is gonna break everything. So what I'm gonna do instead is move everything out of here, which means I need to merge some stuff. So let me just get this and this and these. All right, get all these, get these. Copy, go out here. How fast can I spin up a whole site? Let's find out. So I'm gonna go here, here, and here. And then I need to turn these into dev dependencies. Okay, this needs to be fixed. Good. All right, so that is fine. I can leave that and then I'm gonna take this git ignore, do I need all of these? Yeah, why not? Let's get these and put that in there. Then we've got all of these bits that I'm going to move out here. Yeah, we can replace that index.html. Good. All right. So then I can delete this and I can npm install. Good. Then I'm going to run Netlify dev. And let's see what happens. Should auto detect that we're using Vite. Okay. So now we're running Vite. And what I can do then is I can. Uh, let me go back to this table and I'm going to run, what do we call this function? Notion, get notion data. Okay, so here is our list, right? And then what we can do in here, if I go back to my index.html, that's going to pull in app.js, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go in here to app.jsx. That pulls everything good. So then I'm gonna get a use effect and uh, we can drop this part out. So we'll instead say, um, 
items, I guess, and set items. And that'll be a use state with an empty array to start. Okay, then we're gonna use effect. And inside of here, we will have that run on, I guess on, uh, just on load. Yeah, because that's fine. Um, then we're going to set up an async function to load notion data. That is going to const response equals await fetch, and we'll go to Netlify. I'm going to have to make this functions get notion data. I'm going to have to make this an absolute URL because fetch doesn't like it if you don't. So we'll go localhost 8888 to start. I have to figure out how to make that work. And then I'm going to do a then res JSON. And that should give us data. Then what I want to do is um, that's going to give us a response. Let's console log that to start. And that'll give us a starting point for getting our data. And then down here, we can do something like, let's get, let's actually get rid of all of this. And instead we'll put in an H1 that says like data loaded from Notion published every minute, right? Uh, Cause we're gonna have to go back down to an every minute publish to make that work. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to set up a unordered list and we'll go with items dot for, nope, items dot map item. And for each of these, we're gonna return a list item with a key that's gonna to need to have some value. And then the name, which will be item dot name theoretically, um, but we're probably gonna to have to do some mapping here. So let's let's actually just assume we're gonna have an item dot name and an item dot key. And that's what we're gonna display. So I need to figure out how to get these details in here. And now we need to load notion data. Great, okay. so. How have we done? Let's go back to the home page. There we go. We've got some data loaded from Notion. We've got an object. That's going to give us results. So I am going to... Let's go with const uh, loaded items is going to be response.results.map. And then each of these I'm going to turn into a simplified object that just has a key and a name. So we've got an ID. I'm going to make that my key. So I can actually just simplify this even further. Let's do it like this so that we just return this object right away. So the key is going to be res.id and the name is going to be res properties dot name dot title oh boy yikes okay this is going to be messy so i'm just going to let it go and be gross because i don't want to deal with uh, a lot of type checking or uh, like presence checking so we're just going to let it be bad so we're going to go res dot straight into properties, res.properties.name. And then we're gonna get dot title, oof. Then we get right on in here and we say plain text. And that should be okay. This is a bad joke. Okay, so theoretically speaking, that is what we want, and then I can um, set items to loaded items, and that will, theoretically speaking, give us a list on the page. Let's give it a try. I broke it. Why didn't this work? What went wrong? Are we getting a... Oh, they're down here. Okay, so this header is weird. Um, let's simplify that then and get rid of this header so that we don't have the styles working against us here. 
All right. So now we have this, not the, not the best looking thing that we've ever made, but it also means that whenever new data gets added, this will get updated. And, um, if we were going to do this with like a static site generator, we could use like Next.js would be get static props. Uh, with Gatsby, we could load it in as a, as a data piece. With 11D, we could load it in as data. Um, so there are a lot of ways to do this. I went with this because I knew how fast Vite would be to set up and we were a little short on time. So instead, let's, uh, let's see. Would it be better to do the map from use effect inside the function? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, we definitely could. Like not a bad idea. Yeah, why don't we do that? Let's let's do it. We'll take this out here to the get notion data. And what we're going to get on this response is going to be here. Right? And then properties does not exist on type. What are items? What are you yelling about? Object page ID. True though. What does it think exists here? ID object dot. No, it's okay. We're just gonna maybe stop helping. How do I make it ignore? Look away, TypeScript friends. Okay. Um. So we're gonna do that. Loaded items. And then let's try this one more time over here. We're going to do uh, here, get notion data. And there are a, a vastly simplified set of data. So that's a good call. Yeah. Now we're not sending too much back to the browser. We're not sending stuff that's not going to be used. And that means that in our app.jsx, instead of this, we can do this. Okay, now this should all work as expected. It does. Good, good, good. Let's deploy it. So, going to get commit everything. Let's add everything and just make sure I'm not adding a bunch of junk. I'm not get commit uh, build the site using the notion data. Okay, I'm going to get push. Okay, now here's where things are going to get really interesting because what I want to do next is I want to go to my deploys here. We're building the site, but what I really want to do is rebuild that site on a regular basis. So I'm going to go here and down here somewhere. We're going to find build hooks. Great. I'm going to add a build hook and um, I'm going to say rebuild triggered via cron job. And I'm going to save. All right, then I'm going to copy this. And out here, we're going to make a new function. And this function is going to be called rebuild.ts. Okay. And we're going to import handler from Netlify functions. I'm going to import fetch from node fetch. And then I'm going, oops, uh, export const handler, which is a handler. And that is going to be an async function that will uh, const response equals await fetch. And we'll just hit our deploy. You know what I can actually do? We're just going to await. And then I'm going to return status code 200, body of uh, rebuild triggered, right? And now we have a function that is uh, cron jobable. Oops, maybe not, maybe not that many. Maybe that's too many. And let's set up a rebuild. And for now, let's run it every minute. Okay. And so I'm going to get add all good, get commit. Actually, let's, t let's test this real quick and make sure that I actually made it work before we ship it. Okay, so here's our function. And if I go to Netlify functions, 
rebuild. It says rebuild triggered. If we go out here and actually look, did it do it? It did not. Okay. Why did, oh, because it has to be a post. That makes more sense. Okay. So I need to go back in here and we're going to change this to be a method of post. All right. Let's try that again here. And then I'm going to, where was it? Where was it? This one. Here we go. Try again. There it is. Okay. So now we have a, uh, a rebuild happening via a post. And so I can get add all get commit add a site rebuild cron job let's push and this is going to go live momentarily all right and so this there are a lot of things that are going on here that are are kind of like not as polished as as you would want them to be um for example, I am using a client side fetch, so it kind of doesn't matter that we're rebuilding the site. It's not going to change anything. Um, however, if we were publishing this live, which it is now live, you can go in and see it here. Um, are you going to pretend like you don't work? Mime type of octet stream. What the heck does that mean? main.jsx are you not publishing uh oh oh you know what it is it's because i didn't uh i didn't uh um change out the the like build commands and stuff so when you run an npm run build it is going to create vite build and then it sets things up in dist so i need to change this to be npm run build and i need this to be dist Okay, save. Back we go. See our cron job is already working. Uh, but this one I'm going to cancel because we know it's going to fail because we hadn't updated those pieces yet. So I'm going to go back, trigger. And this one should actually deploy the site because now the details are correct because we... Uh... Oh, I didn't change the URL I'm fetching for data. That is going to break as well. Dang it. Okay, so that is going to live here yes okay so let's take that put that in there okay okay so we fixed that url and now we've got a site that so this one's built and if i reload the page we should get it should load but uh not load the data because we're hitting localhost. But once this next deploy works, which will happen momentarily, now it's actually building. Good. It's deploying the site. Good. And there we are. We now have a site that is uh, pulling from the Notion database. Da da da. Um, yeah, Kenny, I think the, the challenge with fetch is that fetch yells at me if it's not an absolute URL, I think. Maybe that's only in Node, actually. That's a good question, and one that's probably worth digging into. I don't have time to do it today because we are out of time, but check it out. The deploy hook is now working, and we're seeing cron jobs fired every minute. So the site will now be rebuilt every minute. I'm going to turn that off because obviously we don't actually want to rebuild the site every minute. But one way that this could be really useful is imagine you've got an API. Now that API is going to be serving up assets. Those assets don't change often, but they do change often enough that you want to make sure they're refreshed. You can use an on-demand builder to make sure that those, those functions don't 
uh, that they return like cached API responses. But then you could set up a cron job to redeploy, which would clear those API responses every 15 minutes, every hour, every day, whatever it is to get the latest data. And that way you would have a really, really performant API endpoint that also stays up to date because it refreshes at whatever the interval is that keeps your data up to date. So there's some really interesting patterns and, and ways that you could approach these sorts of things that um, they would really like solve a lot of problems. And yes, Jordan, to answer your question, if we get out here and we try to manually trigger, um, let's go to Netlify functions rebuild, I'm going to get access denied because you cannot manually trigger a scheduled function. They are protected in that way. And that's for a reason because yeah, if I had this out there and it was, and it was public, you could just spam my site and use up all my resources and, and cause a bunch of problems. You know, is there some DDoS issues? And this eliminates that by making sure that you would have to intentionally make this available for me to go and do, um, which I wouldn't recommend. Don't do that. But so that I think is going to be a successful run chat. I really hope that y'all are excited about this. I think there's so much cool stuff coming so that you could go and, uh, and, and try this out. I'm really curious to see what you build. So as you're building out your own cron jobs, please tweet at us, uh, tweet at me at uh, I'm, I think you all probably know my Twitter, but just in case here is me on Twitter and send me what you're working on. I want to hear about it. Uh, you can also tweet at Netlify. Um, make sure you hit up Simon because this is a very cool feature and he is, uh, very, very excited. Um, we've got docs here. If you want to get into the docs, very, very good things coming out of this. I'm just, I'm just so dang excited and make sure you keep an eye on Netlify labs too. We have so many fun things coming up. Uh, this is, this is the first of a decent number of pretty exciting launches that we're doing. I am so, so stoked about our engineering team right now. They're doing so much good work. Our product team is killing it. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Lots of good stuff coming on the Netlify front. And I'm really excited to see what you build with it. So let's call this one a win. Thank you all so much. Uh, who should we raid, chat? You got anybody on your mind that you want to go and raid? Let's see, I see. Oh, you know who's live right now? Michael Jolly, who has not been back for a while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send us over to go see Michael. So let's do that. Y'all, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, while we are waiting for that to happen, make sure you check out. We've had white coat captioning here with us. Jordan's been taking things down all day. Thank you very much for that. That's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight. Please check them out. And while you're checking out things on the site, make sure you check out the schedule. We've got a ton of really, really good stuff coming up. So make sure you go and hit that schedule. Add it on Google Calendar. Lots of fun things coming down the pipeline. With that, we will see you next time, chat. Thank you all so much for hanging out.